Why flowers? Why do you think the flowers are there? Flowers attract insects that help in pollination. How many of you know pollination? You know pollination properly? I'm going to show you quickly. Well, so try to understand the reason why flowers are produced. Why flowers are produced? They help in attracting the pollinators. Pollinators like the insects which help in pollination. Now what is pollination? Let's see here. There's a flower. Wow. Wow. That's a bee. It's hovering over the flower. And what happens when it's hovering over the flower? The male, the pollen grains rather. The pollen grains, it get, it sticks on the body of the bee. Right? You know about this. Pollination, a simple thing we are talking about. Next, we have another flower. Another flower. When the same bee, when it visits the next flower, what happens? When the bee is there hovering around the flower, these pollen grains are dusted on the female part. Pollen grains are the male, male, right? Male reproductive uh, structures. And the male reproductive structures, these pollen grains are deposited on the female structures, female reproductive structures. Yes, this is pollination, the transfer of the anther, or the, rather I should say the transfer of the pollen grains from one flower to the stigma of another flower or the same flower. Stigma, that's the female part. So this is about pollination and this is essential for the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Fine, let's quickly see the structures. Structures, non-reproductive parts, non-reproductive parts. Sepals, these are the sepals. These protects all the internal parts. It's an outer, outer layer. These are the petals. So these do not directly, these are parts of the flower, but they do not take part in the reproduction process. Now these are the carpels. Carpel, this is the female sex organs, which produces the female gametes. Carpel, okay. Now the carpel is comprised of what? The stigma, this is the style, this is the ovary. Stigma, the topmost part, the tubular part, film, the tube-like part is the style and the ovary, which have the female gamete. Fine? Yes. Now these are the stamens. I'm talking about the male sex organs. This produces the male gametes, the pollen grains. Now, the anther, yes, this is the filament and various forms of pollen. Now see this image. The structure, the morphology of the pollens are also really, really interesting because there are many forms. And this is based on, you know what? This is based on what is the mode of pollination? What is the pollinator that is being used by a certain specific type of flowering plant to transfer these pollen grains? Based on that, some have hooks, okay, some are sticky. So these are some of the characteristic features and they can be really beautiful. They can be of different forms. So pollen, male gametophyte. Well, talking about the male gametophyte a bit, if I show the structure properly, okay? Now, if you cut the anther like this and then open it up and try to look like from here at an angle of 90 degrees, right? Straight, if you just try to look like this, then what you will see is these structures. These are called the lobes. There are four lobes, tetralocular, four lobes. And inside the lobes is present what the microspore mother cell the microspore mother cell undergoes meiosis and then forms the microspores these are the microspores these separate and these are the microspores which are basically what the pollen grains which will form the pollen grains mature and form the pollen grains correct yes now if male gametophyte is pollen what is the female gametophyte this is a bit complex bit complex Yes. Now, now, you know about the ovary, right? Ovary, this is the female reproductive part. Inside the ovary is the ovule. Inside the ovary is the ovule. Now, ovule is the megasporangium. Megasporangium of the angiosperms. Fine? So, there you talked about, in case of uh, males, the microsporangium here in females i'm talking about the megasporangium so these consist of the megaspores megaspores megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis try to recall and forms the megaspores yes yes so the 
Megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis, forms four haploid megaspores. Three of them, three out of the four, degenerate. One becomes the functional megaspore. It matures. Fine? It matures. It divides. It divides and forms the embryo sac. Embryo sac is basically the female gametophyte. So, this is how and what happens over here. You see, this is one my megaspore, one megaspore. It starts dividing and yes, it forms the embryo sac, which is the female gametophyte. Fine. Don't worry. You don't have to know the detailed processes, detailed parts right now, because you are going to study in detail when we are dealing with the 12th standard chapter there we are going to study sexual reproduction in flowering plants it's a very interesting chapter now let me show you the embryo sac the embryo sac looks like this now questions right now for this chapter can be asked on asked based on the number of cells and number of nuclei just pay attention to the structure properly so here you see the antibodal cells are here on this end this end the antibodal cells there are three cells okay they have each of them have their nuclei nucleus now on this, these are the synergids and this is one egg, which is the female gamete. So how many? We have talked about six cells, six nuclei. Now the interesting part here is this one, the secondary nucleus. It's a single cell because the cells have fused the cell. Okay. What, ha what happens, you know, it's not, I, I should talk it like when we were talking about this, that through mitosis, this one meg megaspore, it forms a number of cells. What happens is, at this point of time, when this central cell, it is also called central cell, central cell is formed, what happens? The karyokinesis does not happen. That is, nuclear division does not happen. Nuclear, sorry, the nuclear division happens, but the cytokinesis do does not happen. Understand? Once more, once more. So when the megaspore, megaspore, it starts mi dividing mitotically, these cells, all these cells that you're seeing forms. But while the formation of the central cell, what happens? The nuclear division, karyokinesis happens. So two nuclei are formed, but the cytokinesis does not happen. So single cell having two nuclei. So in total, how many cells we have? We have three over here. We have three over here. And we have one, seven cells. And how many nuclei? Come on, answer quickly. We have eight nuclei. Correct? Because of this structure. Seven cell and eight nuclear structure is the structure if you talk about in terms of about the embryo sac. It's a very important concept. Questions are definitely asked on this area. Now fertilization. Fertilization. You saw about this. A simple process of pollination, right? Now when these pollen grains are dusted on the stigma you know what happens there you are going to study about it there are some secretions of the stigma there are some fluids okay it's a it uh, secretes some nutritious medium which is required for the germination of this pollen you know what happens exactly the pollen the pollen at the starting have two cells okay this bigger one is the vegetative vegetative cell having the vegetative nucleus this one smaller one is the generative generative cell having the generative nucleus this is a smaller one now what happens take a close look proper properly see see what happens a tube starts forming and this happens after the pollen grains are deposited on the stigma of the females of the flower female structure fine you see okay now, now what happens? I'll just remove this so that you don't get confused. I'll remove it. Now, once more, I'm showing it. See, the vegetative cell, the bigger one. Genetive cell, the smaller one. Next, the tube starts forming. Okay, the nuclei starts moving inside the, inside the tube. And what happens, very important, the generative cell divides mitotically to form two, two male gametes. Fine, you got it? Okay, this is very important. So right now, how many male gametes do we have? Two. Now let's see what happens in the fertilization. You have seen about the pollen tube that has formed, correct? This is the tube. And you have seen about the two nuclei, correct? Two nuclei which has formed because of mitosis. Now you know what happens. 
This pollen tube, it enters the embryo sac and releases the two male gametes. Now one of the male gametes, take a close look at this one because this is a very important concept we are discussing right now. So one gamete, one male gamete fuses with the egg. It forms the zygote. The other fuses with this cell, the central cell and forms the pen, primary endosperm nucleus. This becomes 3N, this becomes 2N. Why 3N? Well, why 3N? Because there were already existing two nuclei. Fine. And here one male nuclei, one male gamete fused. So it becomes 3N, 2N plus 1N, 3N. Now here, it was the egg, which was N, haploid, and the male gamete haploid fused. So it became 2N, that is the zygote, 2N. Fine. This is termed as double fertilization. Why? Because two male gametes are fertilizing. One is fertilizing the egg, the other one is fertilizing the central cell. So double fertilization. It's also known as triple fusion. You know why? Triple fusion? Because of this one. Because three nuclei are fusing together and forming 3N. It's also known as triple fusion. Great. Rather, I should say, I should rather say double fertilization. You understood the concept because two fertilization, one having happening here, one happening here. Double fertilization. The other thing is triple fusion. Why it is called triple fusion? Because of this. Because here, two nuclei is fusing with what? The male gamete. So rather I can say the male gamete fusing with this two polar nuclei. Right? 3N. So forms the primary endosperm, endosperm nucleus, PEN. Well, so you know about this. And yes, the diplontic life cycle. Here, the diploid sporophytic stage is the dominant one. Fine. Now, I'm going to flash a slide. Don't get scared about this because we have talked about it. And now, before I show it to you, quickly run, go and grab a pen or a pencil and a paper. Again, we are going to do something. We are going to try out something. You are going to try out. Right? Quickly. You have five seconds to grab a pen and a paper. Come on. Let's let's figure out if whatever we have learned, we have learned correctly or not. You are going to do now. Fine? Are you ready? Do the diplontic life cycle. From where are you going to start? Don't look at the image totally. Just follow my instructions right now. Start with the flower. Start with the flower here. Here you have the flower. First, just don't have to draw the diagrams. You write the steps. From the flower, just first think about how the female gametophyte will be formed. Right, female gametophyte. Female gametophyte is where well, the here. You have megasporangium, which have the megaspore mother cell. Written, megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis, forms megaspores. Got it? Out of four, how many are functional? Only one. That megaspore, one single functional megaspore, divides mitotically and forms the. Female gametophyte, which is the embryo sac. On the other hand, now do about the male. You have microsporangium, four structures, four lobes, right? Tetralocular. It undergoes, so it has the microspore mother cell. It will undergo meiosis and forms microspores, which will mature to form the pollen grains. So these are the male gametophyte, the pollens. These are the male gametophyte. Male gametophyte, female gametophyte, we have got. Now what happens? Fertilization. Fertilization. Think about double fertilization. Yes, the pollen tube formation. Fine. Two male gametes are released. How many? Two. Double fertilization, triple fusion. You have to remember two terms. If you do, then you are clear about the concept how fertilization happens in angiosperms. Great. Okay. So, endosperm, that is the primary endosperm nucleus. From there, endosperm will form. This is the seed coat. Embryo has formed after fertilization with the egg. Egg and the male gamete. One of the male gametes. Other male gamete fertilizes the central cell. Great. Here, the seed germination, sporophyte 2N. Of course, the seed germination has happened. Now, yes, this process continues. So, you understand about the diplontic life cycle and see the majority of the phase, majority of the cycle is taken by the sporophyte that is the diploid stage diploid got it fine 